My name is Amy Olivares and I am new to the Psych2Go channel. So before I get started with the real topic of this video, I want to introduce myself. And my name is Amy. I'm an electronic media communications major at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. I'm not majoring in psychology, but I've always been interested in it. I and I decided to join the Psych2Go team because I am interested in electronic media such as the internet and I'm interested in writing. I was an intern writer with Psych2Go and now I'm officially part of the staff writers, I believe, which is really exciting. But now I've decided to make a couple YouTube videos to go along with my writings. I do have my own YouTube channel. It is just my name. It's Amy Olivares. I'll put a caption down below just so you can um, see what I'm talking about and I'll also put a link down there too so you guys can check that out. Without further ado, let's get to the real topic of this video. So as you can see by the title of this video, uh, I will be talking about medical marijuana. I know it's a very uh, controversial issue these days, but it's also very prominent and very current. The reason why I chose the topic of medical marijuana is because I'm taking a writing for media class this summer and one of our assignments is an informative writing assignment which includes finding articles about topics that are newsworthy currently and I was also looking for something to write about for a sec to go and one of the first things that popped up that were related to psychology was medical marijuana so that's why I decided to choose this and it's also very current very prominent in our society, in our culture. It's the way we think about it is changing. So I think it's really important to think about this issue, especially because if there are possible benefits, we should really look into those and also the risks. Marijuana is illegal. Uh, research is very difficult and it's restricted, which prevents quality evidence of the benefits and risks. So I think that's really important to look into. And this video is going to be completely professional and educational. So just try to keep an open mind and be objective. And that's all I can ask. The first article I saw that was over this issue was Sanjay Gupta's It's Time for a Medical Marijuana Revolution. It's by the CNN Medical Mar <laughs> It's by the CNN Chief Medical Correspondent Sanjay Gupta. At the top of this article, he has a slideshow of all the possible benefits marijuana has. It could possibly benefit pain, nausea, epilepsy, concussions, Alzheimer's disease, and bipolar disorder. So that's mainly what inspired me to write about medical marijuana and to make this video about it. In this video, I'm just going to briefly go over the main points and issues I talk about in my writing, and I will put a link to that down there, of course. According to NPR's correspondent Patty Naiman, her article review raises troubling questions about marijuana's safety effectiveness. Researchers from the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom analyzed 79 different studies looking at the benefits of marijuana ranging from chronic pain and to sleep difficulties, mental illness. But the researchers only found moderate or anecdotal evidence. What anecdotal evidence is, it's non-scientific observations or studies which do not provide proof but may assist research efforts, according to the dictionary. So, I mean, if there's not... That kind of makes me question, why, why would these studies not have official scientific observations? As a, that doesn't make sense to me. I just wonder what made them think that this evidence was anecdotal. That would be my main question about that. It said it reduced nerve pain and pain from cancer. That's something that's kind of hard to not make a scientific observation, in my opinion. It's like, it's definitely having an effect if you're not in pain as much. In that same article from NPR, Dr. Deepak C. De Souza, I think that's how you say it, uh, from Yale University's School of Medicine, told his concerns for the possible risks associated with marijuana. He says, the big question is how 
routine daily use, the way one might use marijuana to treat a medical con condition affects the body and the brain over the long term. Concerns have been raised about memory loss, panic, paranoia, and other severe disorders. There is a small risk of schizophrenia or psychotic disorders associated with marijuana use. We fully don't understand why some people appear to be more vulnerable to those effects, but that it is a devastating mental disorder for anyone to have. But I have the feeling it's because some of these people have these disorders already, and maybe the use of marijuana or any other kind of drug, it can set on these disorders. <laughs> It can set on these disorders. I mean, these are some solid concerns and possible risks, but just like with the benefits, there's not any solid evidence for them. Um, they don't understand why some people appear to be more vulnerable to these effects. So this should definitely be taken into consideration when using marijuana for medicinal purposes. The last article I want to talk about is NPR's um, when Weed is the Cure, a Doctor's Case for Medical Marijuana. It's over Dr. David Cassette. He's the director of the Hospice and Palliative Care Program at the University of Pennsylvania. He is a specialist in palliative care uh, patients. And he has found medical marijuana to benefit epilepsy, cancer, post-traumatic stress disorder, neuropathic pain, sleep disorders, mental illness, and other illnesses. He even tried marijuana for himself to treat his back pain. I was really hoping for any form of relief whatsoever, even just a few hours of relief from those muscle spasms, and I found it, says Casseret. I found it though, at least for me, at the cost of the most common side effects of acute use of medical marijuana. Confuse it. Look. Confusion, hallucinations. I think mostly because the de <laughs> I think mostly because the dose I gave myself, being relatively unfamiliar with marijuana, and very unfamiliar with the strength of what I managed to obtain. He specializes in neuropathic pain, which is pain that is caused by the nerves, and it can be really difficult to treat. This is from his article, and like even morphine can be really hard to treat this kind of pain. And he argues that marijuana is one of the only kind of drugs that can treat this type of pain. And so he tried it himself after listening to his patients. And um, he, he noticed that it treated the pain, but with these side effects, like he said, confusion and hallucinations. Um, I could see confusion being one of them for sure that could definitely be a risk slash side effect. But as for hallucinations, from what I've heard about people that have tried marijuana, I rarely hear people um, experiencing hallucinations. Um, but there are, it, it affects everybody differently like any kind of drug does. So I think that would be a rare side effect and it kind of depends on what the person thinks a hallucination is, I guess. Like if you're seeing things, if you're hearing things. Still, those are pretty um, valid concerns and probably side effects that should be looked into when and if hopefully more research is done on medical marijuana. That's basically what my article is about. And I also include some interviews I had with some friends and some quotes from them. I think it's really important to think about this in terms of the research and the evidence that we have about medical marijuana. Because even though doctors such as uh, D'Souza uh, and Cassaret, they disagree on the risks and the uh, benefits, um, they obviously agree on um, the need for improved access to marijuana for research and to provide quality evidence. D'Souza said, Marijuana is difficult to study because there are hundreds of different components in different strains. But focused study is exactly what's needed. Federal and state health officials should remove any legal or financial obstacles to get that done. And Cassaret says, Marijuana in the United States is classified as a Schedule One substance. And that categorization has really slowed down the process of research. 
basically what they're saying is more studies need to be done and more research needs to be done in order to um, because it has so many strains there are different kinds and each one of them could do something different and have different benefits and different risks and marijuana being in the same categorization as heroin that just doesn't make sense. I mean, you never hear anyone dying from a marijuana overdose. I think everyone agrees that there should be more access to marijuana just for research, and so we can have more evidence to either keep it illegal or to decide if it should make legal. So that's basically all I have to say for this video. If you want to read more about this, look down in the description below for my article and you can read more about it. Again, my name is Amy Olivares, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.